She's a humanitarian, she's incredibly compassionate, and she's always thinking about other people before herself. She's one of the most intellectually curious people that I've ever had the privilege of working with. She just brings a very calm and objective perspective to things. It's never, she never gets too emotional about things, um, which is very nice. We kind of all look to her as mom. She has a hard time saying no when people ask for help. Almost always can she say something strong in the kindest of way. She's a visionary. She's been doing things that people have only talked about or people are still talking about and have no idea that she's been doing them for the past 20 years. She changes people's lives because she finds out what's wrong with them. She teaches them how to speak again and she works with them on a day-to-day -day basis if they need that sort of therapy. I had surgery at another hospital and the doctor removed a growth from my vocal cords and when it came out of the surgery, I had no ability to produce sound. I had seen several other doctors before coming to UC Davis to see Dr. Leonard because the other doctors were unable to help me. They didn't understand the condition and they felt that there was nothing that could be done to improve upon it. I had another surgery to remove some of the tissue around my false vocal cords and worked with Dr. Leonard for a long time with various techniques and and treatments to get my voice back. Dr. Leonard, she helped me get my life back. You know, to go from being a 16-year-old with no ability to speak really other than in a very close setting to being able to be an adult and a bit professional with a career and have a life. Becky's done many, many things for speech pathology here in California and nationally. She's well respected as a researcher and as a writer. Pretty much anything in the speech sciences, in voice and in swallowing, when you um, think about a creative new idea, you're probably inventing the wheel Becky's already visited with. I think I come up with something pretty novel and innovative. I'd be like, Becky, I got this great idea. She'd be like, oh, I tried that in 1975, didn't work. Becky would want to regenerate this tongue and, and build a tongue, and she'd reach into her drawer and pull out a tongue. <laughs> I did this 10 years ago. She crafted all these little tongues out of this material. I have a few of them here, and she crafted these and would shape them to the patient's mouth so they could hook it in, and their speech would be improved. You know, she has supported and helped form um, a lot of the practice for a lot of the professionals just in our arena alone and within laryngology. She's developed this center. She basically developed this center probably as one of the first voice and swallowing centers um, in existence. She's developed a large volume of normative data on people of all ages and in disordered populations. The way she's done this is by using fluoroscopy to develop a tool for capturing and analyzing the data. I think it was Lord Kelvin said, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. And she's really has revolutionized the way the swallowing studies are objectively quantified. And without that ability, you can't study something that you can't measure whether or not it's improved. She's shown how clinicians can analyze the studies in 10 to 15 minutes using software that's available over the web to anyone and come out with results that are meaningful and accurate. She's taught this method to many speech pathologists around the country and in, around the world and also has a textbook, which I have here, that has a couple of chapters devoted with detailed instructions as to how to do this. The work she's done has benefited um, volumes of patients who have voice and swallowing problems. And I think we look to a lot of her work for guidance on how to practice clinically. So her work is truly translational. She's really been an advocate for her, her peers and colleagues. And in terms of expanding her specialty scope of practice and fighting for the, the right of speech pathologists of master's and PhD level, to perform endoscopy, she's really f taken that to the capital, literally. And um, living here, she has not taken that responsibility lightly. And now, you know, thousands and thousands of clinicians have the opportunity to do endoscopy because a lot of the groundwork that she's she's provided. Um, she is an absolute consummate 
lecturer and speaker. So whenever she speaks at Grand Rounds, all the residents show up, all the interns show up, all the attendings show up because they respect her so much. Gosh, if I even came away with half of the accomplishments that she has um, as far as research goes, then it would be amazing.